Now, we all know that ArcGIS is a complete system. It's a complete and integrated system that supports many different patterns and also can be accessed in many different ways. But now it's also inherently an online system. Now, a while ago, when we envisioned ArcGIS Online, we had several strategies and goals in mind. And one of those was to create a pervasive online GIS ecosystem. Another was to provide broader access to GIS resources, and that, of course, adds more value to those. Something else we wanted to do was support online GIS communities and also some of the new patterns that Jack had talked about earlier today. We also wanted to address new audiences, not just GIS experts and analysts, but everybody. And perhaps most importantly, we wanted to lay the groundwork for the foundation for our forward-looking GIS in the cloud technologies. This is ArcGIS Online. Now, ArcGIS Online today contains many components. It has maps. These are the base maps, the reference layers, and other content that we use to make maps. And we make maps to share geographic knowledge as well as share our tradecraft. It also has applications. The hosted applications, the built-in map viewer, explorer online, as well as configurable applications and the APIs used to build custom applications. Now, one thing that's very important about all of these applications is that they use the same web map foundation. So what this is, the web map is actually a specification, and we're evolving this specification. And what it enables is ArcGIS online maps to be used everywhere by anyone and easily. And we've seen examples of that throughout this morning already. ArcGIS Online also has tools. Many of these are just built into the user experience, and they're also available for developers, and we're doing lots of work in this area right now, so expect more. It also supports communities. Now, many of these communities are based around organizations, city and local governments. Some are based around themes, and other communities spin up over events, an earthquake response or a, a wildfire. But another community that this supports are business communities. And you know that Esri is investing quite a lot in ArcGIS Online, and I'd encourage all of you to establish your own business presence with your own group and leverage this community as well. Now, ArcGIS Online is Esri's public portal, and it's meant and designed to be available to everybody. But we also recognize that there are many people that want to take all of these capabilities and all of these components and bring them within their organization behind their own firewalls. So with that in mind, what we have done is we've taken the framework of ArcGIS Online, and we call this ArcGIS Portal. We just introduced this. And using ArcGIS Portal, users can implement their own on-premises version of ArcGIS Online. Now, ArcGIS Online continues to evolve very rapidly. And in fact, just a couple of days ago, we had a major new release. And I know I'm not supposed to be full of sunshine here, but I can't help but be full of sunshine about some of these new features. So this is the ArcGIS.com website. And it's been freshened up a little bit. And as you look under the hood, you'll notice some new things. But what I've done is I've created a map, which I'll open now, to highlight some of the new capabilities that are part of this web map foundation. The first is support for temporal services from ArcGIS Server. So notice that when I click this layer on, we get a new time slider, which allows me to play back this weather service, which was captured during some bad storms we had here last month. What we've also done in the web map is enabled the capability to configure pop-ups. So rather than just display a list of attributes, what we can do is turn that information into something more meaningful, like this pie chart. What we've also done is bring map notes into the web, ma web map uh, specification. So these were formerly just the domain of ArcGIS Explorer, but now they're supported across all clients. 
And in fact, what's really interesting about this is when I share this map, I can click this button to generate this HTML, which lets me embed this in a website or a blog. And here's a blog that I've created with a little post with this web map embedded in it. And you can see that the pop-ups are supported in this embedded application as well. Now, another interesting way that we can use these is to make a custom web application. And we have a gallery of templates that you can choose from. And you can download the source code for these. And we can also click to preview what the map might look like. So you can see this one has a legend built in. And of course, those pop-ups are also supported. Now let's zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at map notes. <clears throat> so we'll zoom in. Now you'll notice with this layer, I now have an edit button. And when I click the button, I have a collection of features that I can add to my map. For example, here's a freehand feature, and I can digitize and add features to my map. Now, these work across all applications, and let's move to Explore Online. One of the first things you might notice is that this has a brand new user experience. It's very streamlined. The ribbon has been replaced by this much more easy to use experience. But it supports the same map foundation elements that I just showed you, as well as the ability to add features. Now, here's that same palette of features that we just saw in the map viewer, and I can use that to digitize features here. But I can also, using ArcGIS Explorer, create custom features. And here's a palette of custom features that I made earlier and saved in my map. Now, every time I come down to Palm Springs, it seemed to have a problem parking. So let's define a new parking area here. And uh, I know the city is concerned about appearance. So let's add a little garden feature over in this area. And let's add a water feature. And now what I'd like to do is establish some pathways that users or that pedestrians can use to travel to the convention center. So I'm using an existing palette of features, but I can also modify these features. Let's make it a different color. We'll change the width. And now I can add this feature to my template gallery. And now any time that I want to add a similar feature, I can now just pick it and add it to my map. So very easy to do. One final thing that I'd like to show you with Explore Online are the presentation capabilities. So I'd like to communicate my proposed parking lot changes here to the city. So we'll add a new slide, and we'll add a title. And now I've incorporated that into a presentation that I've already started, which allows us to provide a welcome to Palm Springs. I advance by using the space bar. I can zoom in further. And I can also take control of this at any point in time and do more exploration. Here I can look at the pop-up for the convention center here. And my next slide is my proposed lot addition. So this makes it very easy to share some of the geo design changes like I've just done here. Now, one final thing I'd like to show is the ArcGIS portal. And I've now signed in. And you can see this palette represents different templates that I can apply to the portal that you know of now as the ArcGIS Online. So using these templates, we can apply a new skin. Underneath the hood, we're using the same framework. And you'll recognize many of the same capabilities. But this is now presented in a different way for a different purpose and organization in mind. So this is the on-premises version. And with that, that completes my overview of ArcGIS Online. Check it out.